Hello guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about all of the common problems on the BMW 7 Series. Let's get into it. Now then, here we have a 2003, so pre-LCI BMW 760L. I. Now some of the common problems are going to be slightly different depending on whether yours is a pre or a post LCI and depending on which model you have. But hopefully this video is going to be somewhat insightful if you own or are thinking of owning a BMW 7 Series. Now first of all we're going to head inside the car and talk about the most notorious common problem. So we are inside the car then and the number one common problem with these cars is the iDrive system. Now I'm sure the iDrive system was great in 2003 when it came out. You know, it was a revolutionary design in cars, you know, to have an infotainment system with a screen inside of your car in 2003, I'm sure was pretty special. Now, there has been a lot of issues with regards to navigating it. You know, I really don't see why it is why it is. Um, you kind of have to navigate everything by, you know, just scrolling this wheel and it is kind of complicated. But I'm not going to be talking about whether or not the iDrive is good or bad. I'm talking about the issues with the iDrive. So, you can actually end up losing full functionality of the iDrive system if one of the respective uh, modules goes down. And that, is actually, and that is actually what has happened in my case. So... You have a navigation unit in the trunk of the car and it's usually on the left side and when that goes down it basically takes down your entire uh, iDrive system so you can't use your radio, you can't use any of your entertainment, you can't use uh, obviously your uh, navigation, you can't even go into your onboard data to reset things like your MPG. It basically just makes sure iDrive unusable. Now there is an easy fix of course, you just replace the module in the boot. Now in my opinion, if you are going to be swapping out the nav unit in the boot, then you do want to swap it out for a an LCI one, a later model one, because they have uh, less issues. I'm not too sure what the what the main issue with the uh, with the module itself is, whether it's overheating or what, but the earlier uh, modules they have a lot of issues so in my opinion you should get one that's after uh, 2006 and, uh, and then you should be pretty much good to go to be honest now in my uh, in my case uh, I'm not actually going to be just replacing that module I'm going to be replacing all of the modules because the LCI iDrive is much better not only does it look slightly better than this one it is actually much much quicker much smoother and everything that goes along with it and you have uh, a couple of buttons on the uh, scroll wheel here so you have a menu button and i believe you have some directional buttons as well so if you are thinking of buying a bmw 7 series then i would recommend either getting an lci uh, car or upgrading the iDrive system to an LCI iDrive system. And before we step outside then, the next common problem I want to talk about is these door struts. So if you take a look down there, we can see we have a strut for the door. Now there is one of these on each four of the doors. Now with time, and with age, these do like to fail. So what tends to happen is your door does not hold in a certain position. Now traditionally on a door you would have a check strap or as BMW like to call them, a door brake. But we don't, we don't have that because this is a BMW 7 Series, we have to have something extra. We have to have a strut. Now, of course, with this being a BMW 7 Series, with this being a little bit different, these things are not cheap. But if you are going to be replacing these, you're better off replacing all four of them. So, you know, the rear doors and both of the fronts as well. Because if one of these has failed, then there's a good chance the other three are not far behind. Now then, here we are in the engine bay, and I'm not going to talk too much about the individual engines, obviously, 
each engine has its own faults. This being the six liter N73 engine, it's very, very reliable and it does not have too many common problems. Now, the thing I do wanna talk about in here is this thing just here. So this is the power steering fluid reservoir. Now, if yours looks like this, it is much larger to your average one. That means you have the dynamic drive system. Now, what this is, is essentially active suspension, both in the front and the rear it means that you have hydraulic anti-roll bars and it is even more critical that you replace the fluid and the reservoir because the reservoir does have a filter in it so whenever you swap out the fluid you should also do the reservoir at the same time as you can see this is kind of all splurged over the top there's a good indicator that the filter is stopped up but you need to keep on top of this because that it, that can be a reason why you have the dry dynamic drive failure which in my case we do have but we are not sure what the cause is yet but a good place to start is to swap out the uh, reservoir and the fluid as well and that moves me on to my next point which can be another cause for the complete dynamic drive failure is the front anti-roll bar and also the rear as well but it's more common for the front anti-roll bar to leak now of course if you don't have dynamic drive then this should be then this should not be an issue for you but if you do have dynamic drive like myself then there is a good chance that the front anti-roll bar is leaking now currently there is no repair kits for it and if you want to buy a brand new unit then you're looking at in excess of 1500 pounds directly from the dealership so I may or may not be repairing mine or replacing it, but I do want to get to the bottom of the dynamic drive failure. But if you don't currently have dynamic drive failure and you do have the dynamic drive system, then I would highly recommend swapping out this canister and also doing a complete fluid flush. And the next current problem is to do with the suspension again, but it's actually in the rear this time, and it is to do with the rear struts or airbags because these do have airbags in the rear now these can actually fail you'll know when they are failed because your rear end will be sitting down way too low it will kind of be collapsed at least on one side and generally there is two causes for it it's either the bag has failed and it's lost pressure or the compressor in the boot under the spare tire well that has failed it's either one of those two problems why your car is sitting too low on one side another common problem then and this is something that i'll actually be able to demonstrate to you right now and this is to do with the trunk so with this having an electronic trunk this should raise up when i press the button on the key but if i do that now we have pretty much nothing. We can hear a noise, but we don't have anything. So to raise it up, I'm gonna to have to do it manually. I'm gonna to have to push this button and lift it up. You can hear it's making not a very nice noise. But we managed to get it up somehow. Now, the noise seems to stem from the motor itself, which is just here. Now. It's either going to be the motor that has failed or it is sometimes what can happen is it can leak out the hydraulic fluid which just sits in this reservoir just here or it is going to be your strut. So you have this strut here which is fed with the hydraulic fluid. This can sometimes fail as well. And as we got out of the rain just in time, I'm going to talk about the final common problem which is the transmission. So because all BMW 7 Series only come with an automatic transmission, it is absolutely crucial that you do service them. So if you have no history of your transmission ever being serviced, just go ahead and do it. You know, there's theories out there that, you know, if you get over a certain mileage and you are to service it and there's no history of it ever being done, then you can actually cause more problems. Personally, I don't agree with that. You know, if you have bad fluid in your uh, transmission and you put fresh fluid in there, it can only really help things, to be honest. Um, but with that being said, 
generally you want to service your transmission every 60 to 80 thousand miles just to keep on top of things just to keep things running smoothly now i know the transmission in this car has actually been serviced twice now once before i owned it at around ninety-five thousand miles uh, i don't know if it had been done prior to that uh, but I, I know it's definitely done at around ninety-five thousand miles and then i have uh, serviced it myself i've done a full um, fluid change which is around seven liters and then i also done the pan of course which contains the filter and uh, i also done the mechatronic sleeves and the seals and the bridge uh, seal as well uh, it's, it's worth doing all these little jobs you know it's only like slightly extra to do the mechatronic sleeves uh, the uh, plug connector and the bridge seal so you're just as well doing you know all of these at the same time as doing a fluid change um, because it can actually cause issues if the seals uh, fail I know in my in, in my case uh, the bridge uh, seal that had actually cracked on one of the corners and that can actually uh, cause you to lose pressure to your to your solenoids so yeah it's definitely worth doing all these little extra bits when it comes to servicing your transmission um but yeah that's pretty much it guys that's that's like the main common issues the the most expensive common issues i could say you know obviously there's going to be some small little minor things that tend to go wrong with these cars but that's pretty much the most expensive things um now obviously like i said you know you are going to have some common problems with various different engine types but you know the main thing you can do is just uh, over service them really i don't agree with uh, the general bmw recommendations for things like oil changes um just cut them in half and you should be pretty much good to go but yeah anyway i hope this video has been helpful i hope you guys have enjoyed it please give this video a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you have not already done so and i will see you all in that next one peace